You're watching The Breakfast Club. Power 1051 is The Breakfast Club. Good morning. We got a special guest in the building from Queens. The HNIC. Prodigy. What up, man? What up, sir? All good, man. All good. Now, Prodigy handed me a new book. I must say I am a fan of Prodigy's writing. I try to tell everybody to read The Infamous. That was a dope book, so I can't wait to read this. What's this about, The HNIC? That right there is a story I wrote about five friends from Brooklyn, and they, they stick up kids, and then the story gets crazy. They end up turning on each other. It's, it's I can wild. imagine stick-up kids turning on each other. Absolutely. Uh, and, and aren't you writing like a part two to your infamous Yeah, it's not done yet, though. I'm still working on it. I'm still mm -hmm. working on it, yeah. Uh-oh. I'm working on that. Though. What you waiting on to write a movie, man? I mean, you I mean, you had uh, the movie back in the day, Murder Music. Yeah. What were you waiting on to write like a, a full-fledged joint? That's actually the second movie I wrote right there. Okay. But um, I ain't get a chance to shoot it yet, so I, I figured it's fast to put out the book first, mm -hmm. get the story popping, and then start shooting it. So you have your own book imprint now? Yeah, Infamous. Infamous. Are you you're signing other writers and everything? Yeah, I did a deal with uh, Ashley and Jaquavis, um, this writer named Quan, and, uh, oh, I know Quan. and uh, Miyasha. Y'all know Prodigy you got an album out right now, too. It just came out. With The Alchemist. Yeah, with yeah. Alchemist. The Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Yep. yep. This looks like a real book, though. Yeah, no, 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 I know what I mean by that is. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what you know, it's one of those. A lot of people come here and they be like, they got their own imprint and just be looking like Trash. It's actually pretty yeah, nice yeah, looking, yeah. right? Good looking book. Yeah, now, the company that um, put it out, Akashic, they based in Brooklyn. They real, real good. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now let me ask you something. Let's talk about your um, part two that you're working on to your autobiography as well. Yeah. So where does that start? Where um, It starts me leaving jail mm -hmm. and then coming back and, you know, getting my foot in back into the business and beefing with Havoc. Building my brand, building Infamous, you know what I mean? And just all the... You know, trials and tribulations that have been going down since I've been on. So we're in it too then? Yeah, of course y'all in it. Now what about Havoc? What about your relationship <laughs> with Havoc? Things. Only good things. <laughs> what about the relationship with Havoc and how y'all told everybody y'all were cool and y'all were beefing behind the scenes and y'all finally worked it out? Y'all gonna... Yeah, yeah. Me and Havoc is on tour right now. We're doing a world tour right now. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately... Sleep. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, I wasn't able to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to be in Europe today. Why not? Because of my parole situation. Oh. Damn, they still holding you back yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, I got nine more months, dog. Nine more months. So, but don't you gotta work, though? Can't you tell your PO, like, yo, I gotta yeah, work? You they, get letting me, they, act, they letting me travel in the U.S. and just doing not my to, shows. Just not overseas. They just won't let me go overseas. Man. That's crazy. Y'all huge still, huge overseas, right? Yeah, man, it's like psh, you triple say huge the money. still out. overseas? What does that mean? Triple the money. That's it. I mean, that's, listen, these, these OGs, they've been in the game a long time. No, it's, hard to, it's hard to have music that's that timeless. Like, I was years, telling man. them earlier, I work out to a mob deep song every day. That's what's up. Every day when I'm in the gym mm -hmm. three times a week, I'm either listening to G.O.D., Father Part 3, and Infamous album. I knew you were going to say that. That's a great workout song. Or the Murder Music album. Mm -hmm. You got to check out the Albert Einstein, man. That's serious workout music. I got to get it. So I ain't, Alchemist I ain't get it yet. produced that whole album? Yeah, yeah. It's dope, man. It's fire. I would say it's one of the best albums this year. Okay. And it's independent? Yeah. Why independent? Um, just because I want more control over my brand and, you know, the the masters and everything. I just want something passed down to my kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm, I look at it like I'm building a catalog um, brand. Like, it's not about first week sales. It's about 10, 20 years, 30, 50 years. Like, you know what I mean? So you don't miss the major push, the the big videos, the nah, label support? Did it already. He just wants money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I see, I see the bigger picture now, like... I see the bigger picture now selling 20,000 records. The signing advances, the signing you know bonuses. I mean? you, don't, like, you don't, Nah? Nah, nah. The money's just not the same as it used to be, too. I'd rather have ownership and control, and I just see the bigger picture, you know what I'm saying? But you but, made millions of dollars, though. You made, a, you sold a lot of records, been on tour. What, what, what did you do with all your money? Spent it. <laughs> oh, oh, is there anything that you can see? Yeah, I could spend it on this. Spent like, it on jewelry, cars, fashion, hotels, tricking. What's the, you know what I'm saying? What's the but, dumbest purchase you made? The dumbest purchase I made was, I think I told you this before too, um, um, it was a chain from Jacob. Mm -hmm. In a in a Benz, the Benz is the one I told you before. In a Benz, what you mean? It, I bought, I had bought, I had paid for a three, it was a 320S, the big body Benz. You paid for a cash? Paid for a cash, 50, <laughs> right off the, um, Hillside Avenue. Not even a lot. Not even a Benz dealership. You know, the lot. Cash. Are, and, yeah, they yeah, yeah. Me, and, and my man told me, yo, the new model was about to come out in a few <laughs> months. I was like, nah, I always wanted this model right here. So I just paid for it cash or whatever, you know. So when the new model came out, you was like, damn, I want that one. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, I, you're not broke though by any means. Nah, nah, I ain't broke. I ain't broke. I'm good, man. I just got, I just bought a pound just just now in Queens. I'm good. Goodness gracious. Now, after all the backlash <laughs> from the first autobiography, did you feel like you had to check, like, okay, let me at least let you know Havoc know what's gonna be in this book before I put it out and make sure he's cool with it? Did you do that this time around? Um, nah, nah, nah. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't checking with nobody. It's, it's my story. It's my life. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I ain't got, I ain't got to check with nobody. You think there's gonna be things in there that are gonna upset people again? Um, maybe because you know I keep it funky, right? You know what I'm saying? Definitely so, keep it funky. So, so if um, if somebody ain't moving right, then you know that's their fault. Now, did you call Havoc and be like, Havoc, man, what the hell's up with your Twitter, man? You got your own penis pics all over Twitter. Ah, man, I can't. To tell you the truth, I don't know. I can't speak for Hav. I don't know <laughs> what's going on with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, all I know is the, what I've been focusing on, man. You know what I mean? And um. As far as as far as have, I know we've been but killing these shows, man. Yeah. We just did like forty dates in the U.S. You know what I mean? And um, he going overseas today to do some stuff overseas, and then we finish up the tour in August. We got like a number thirty dates in August in the U.S. But yeah, he did apologize for crazy. some comments that he had made about you and said that he was just speaking out of emotion, and he yeah. didn't really mean it. How did I mean, y'all squash you know, that? You too? know, we get internal. We got internal little fights with each other sometimes. We had fist fights before, like you know what I'm saying? It's like. But that was crazy. Things you go through, it's, that's just normal. Like. Sometimes you put allegations out there, like you accuse someone of being gay, and that just never goes away. Like if you yeah, Google that's it, like, it pops I mean, up. Certain things, you know, you just like, why would you say that? But um, you know, it's like the internet and all this social media networking and all this stuff. It's dangerous, man. But P, how did y'all careful, squash man. it though? Like, like he he called you gay. He said you was getting. He didn't booty. call him gay. He just uh, insinuated that he could have been getting aired out in jail. All right. <laughs> you know all right. what it is. You know what it is? It's funny to me. When, when somebody say <laughs> That's that. That's funny to you? Yeah. Your I mean, it, 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 is, it is kind of funny. Somebody, somebody said, on the outside say that, but if Charlamagne if, say it might be a little, you know what I mean? It's like, that. If it's not I true. I call him for gay all the time, though. Look, but I call you gay back. is my partner, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, oh, so you guys like, are partners. Brother. That's my, like, brother, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, for him to say that, it's like, oh, come on, man. I laugh at that. Like, come on. Like, why would you say that? You were like, there. Like, come on, dog. You serious, dog? You could have said anything. You've been on <laughs> How many times we done popped off in the hotel? You come on, cut I it ain't out. never looked at your butt all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even look at your penis pictures online. Did y'all fight? Did y'all, did y'all shoot a quick five or was just nah, nah? Recently, nah. No fights. No fights. So all that is gonna be addressed in the book, though. Um, I can't even say that really, man. I can't even say that. It's, the book mostly focuses on business things. Mm-hmm. Like I want, so I want to show business? people. How has business been going? Yeah, it's been going good, and I, I just want to show people like um, you know, the ins and outs of starting your own. Mm-hmm. building your own brand because I got you know the book company I got the film company I, I just did a deal with Karma Loop yeah you know shout out to mean? Karma Loop yeah what's going on with Karma Loop as, as you, you see, see they, they're they, all in here they too endorsed the well. Breakfast Club well. Karma Loop's spending a lot of money boy they yeah, cut checks yeah, everywhere yeah yeah they, uh, I did a uh, a brand deal with them for Infamous it's uh, for clothing and accessories didn't mm-hmm. you have something so, with Supra before as well yeah I had a deal yeah. with Supra right now I'm doing a deal with Huff Huff is a new company I'm working with they based out in Cali it's like another uh Skater company, you know what I mean? We're doing a sneaker together. Mm-hmm. Man, you be doing um, a lot of stuff. How did those come about? It those people. I, I would assume that those are kids who grew up and they are just fans of Mob Deep, so they want to be in business with you. The, a lot of it is me out there hustling. You know what I mean? Networking and meeting people, and then, you know, I just so happen to meet some people. They and they, like you said, they, a lot of them be fans of Mob Deep, and they be willing to do business. Like, yeah, come on, let's do something together. You know what I mean? Dope. Uh, so you, I, I'm sure you're still a fan of hip hop. You see everything that's going on, like you know, J Cole dropping out, album, yeah. Easy, Mac Miller. Like, who, who 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 are you listening to right now? I like I like Easy album, man. It's kind of it's it's real like artistic. Um, I think Easy's is garbage. I I, I, li- I like his album, man. Um, I like a few of the songs on it a, a lot. I like Blood on the Leaves. I like the Bounded Joint. Other than that, yeah, it, it, it's kind of it's kind of um, like risky, like you know what I mean. But uh, I I understand it. I understand what he's doing because he's an artist. You know what I mean. Um, uh, I heard J Cole album. It's it's kind of dope. I like J Cole. Um, I'm really listening to like Action Bronson album mm. and like you know uh, Static Static Selector dropped the album. Yeah. Like, I, I've been on my real, you know, underground, hardcore joints right now, you know what I mean? So what do you like, think about hip-hop now as far as, as a lot of artists coming out? A lot of the artists coming out, um, a lot of people, you know, they think they could just rap because it's so easy, you know, it's it's, access, it's accessible to everybody now. Everybody mm-hmm. got studio on their laptop. Everybody and their mother could make a song. So it's just like, it's harder for the, like, the younger fans, the new fans of this generation that listen to the rap, it's harder for them to comb through and find the real 
real quality stuff, you know what I mean, and, and separated from the from the garbage. So it's like there's a lot of garbage out, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But um, it's definitely some quality material out there, man. You know, definitely, mm-hmm. yo. Let's talk about your Albert Einstein album for a minute. Now you decided to call it Albert Einstein. We all think of him as a genius, but you said that he really was actually more maybe of a thief. Yeah, yeah, I had uh. I, I was doing some research on Albert Einstein, and, and I learned that he worked for the patent office for like 10 years before he started writing all these theories and whatnot and, science, and these scientific journals and whatnot. And I just put two and two together, like, come on, this dude must have been stealing the patents and just like, you know what I mean, <laughs> claiming ownership to them, like, you know what I mean? It's kind of weird. When you do the research, you see what I'm talking about. Like That's one of the 48 laws of power, though. You uh, um, steal people's ideas, but you let other people do the work, but you take the credit for it. Right. <laughs> you know? Right, right. And his job at the patent office was to, he would, like, people, would, you were sending a patent for an invention you have or an idea you have, and his job was to look at it and tell you if somebody else has that or not. So his job is to say, oh, no, somebody got that already. So imagine how many times he probably did that to people. Oh, hell no, yeah, we got already this. got that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. So, yeah. so that's why you named the album Albert Einstein. Nah, that was just, that was just like, you know, fun fact. That I'm <laughs> yeah, a little fun fact. <laughs> it's your, little government, bottle it's fact. your government name, Albert, though? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I called the, al- um, the album Albert Einstein because uh, the first um, joint I dropped when I got home was Bumpy Johnson. Mm-hmm. And I... And that was like a code name for myself because my name, my last name is Johnson. You know what I mean? So I wanted to use another name for an album. You know, something that like the same thing with Bumpy Johnson. So I was like, oh yeah, Albert Einstein. That's dope. Okay. You know, when you come out the Albert Johnson album, because <laughs> 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 yeah. you keep splitting up the that's names. That's the book. That's the book. Okay. <laughs> well, G. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, but um, yeah, the Albert Einstein. You know, it's um, to me, it's like, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, a work of like. Genius. It's like hardcore genius. That's that's what it sounds like to me. You know what I mean? Because Alchemist is like, to me, I'm gonna say it like this: Alchemist is the best producer in the game right now. Mm-hmm. To me, he's dope. Nah, and he's worked dope. on every single one of your albums. Yeah, uh, and and, and to me, guy. he's the number one best producer in the game right now. I mean, there's a lot of hit records on the radio from this guy producer and that guy producer. But at the end of the day, who stand the test of time? When people look back, they're gonna be like, "Oh, this, yeah, you was right." That dude is the best. You know what I'm and you're also like, doing a new Mob Deep album. Yeah, we're working on the Mob album right now. How's that coming up? Y'all gonna do that? Y'all gonna do that indie too? Or? Yeah, I mean, um, hopefully, if all goes well, it come out on Infamous. You know what I mean? All right. Um, but we like nine songs deep with that right now. It's coming out crazy. Havoc did all the production on it. You know what I mean? So is it still um, is it difficult to write those hardcore Mob Deep records when you may not be living like that no more? Um, nah, nah, it's not difficult for me because. Um, it's just it's just embedded in me, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't but it ain't difficult. Now, for last... me, it's like a lot of, a lot of. I don't mean to cut you off. For yeah. me, it's like a lot of the um the pain that comes out of me is from you know having six growing up with sickle cell and just like being feeling like I'm almost dying and really almost dying all my life. Like you know what I mean? So it's like it's just got a lot of anger built up in me. So it's real easy for me to you know what I mean express my anger through the music. I see you got the sickle cell tattoo. Yeah, you know. A lot of people wouldn't want to think that, you know what I mean? That's my medical badge, emergency badge, gotcha. you know what I mean? Gotcha. <laughs> now, now, speaking of sickle cell, I didn't know how serious sickle cell was until um, an aunt of mine came and visited, and she stayed with, my, stayed with me a couple of days, and, you know, one day she'd be great, like, good to go, we at the beach, everything is good, she's playing with the kids, and the next day she's effed up where she can't move. Yeah, serious. And, now, is like that, that how serious sickle cell is with you? You know, one time we was on tour with Big Pun, and um, it was uh, us, Pun, and I think Fat Joe was there, and we had just did a show. Mm-hmm. After the show, I get back to the hotel, and all of a sudden, the pain just came out of nowhere. It hit me crazy. I couldn't even move. And, um, like, my boys had to carry me to the car. I couldn't even walk or nothing. My boys had to carry me to the car, take me to the emergency room. And and Pun, see how much pain I was in? I was, like, screaming in pain. Pun started crying. Like, that was crazy, yo. Mm-hmm. I seen Pun crying. Word. <laughs> Now, now with sickle cell, now, now you say you rush, they rush you to the emergency room. So when they get you to the emergency room, what can they do for sickle cell? They just give you, um, like, morphine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Morphine injections until the pain goes away. It's, then they it's just like let you really go? no cure so for it. So there is no way that you, 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 it could just get hit any, any given minute. Right now, you could just have a, a sickle cell attack. And... It, it's not that fast, but it's like gradually mm-hmm. it can happen within, like, 30 minutes. Yeah. Wow. You still get them often? Nah. I ain't have I ain't been sick in five six years. Oh, you think part of it was I mean? the, the way that you were drinking and living and doing yeah, all yeah, that, definitely. That, when you look at you and tell you take a better care of yourself. When I got locked up, I started working out every day. I started eating right. 
and I started drinking like water like I was crazy and and, uh, and it worked like so in a way mean? getting locked up might have actually helped man it saved yeah, your it life sa- it saved, saved my life. life it definitely saved my life you know what I mean you it think def- you'd have been dead more, if you in more ways than one you think you'd have been dead if you didn't go to jail yeah in more, in more ways than one man like in the street like I was running around bugging beefing with other rappers and just doing a lot of dumb stuff and um you know, put myself in risky positions where I might have to do something to somebody or somebody can do something to me. Like, you know what I mean? So it was a good thing that I got locked up, man, in more ways than one. So when you, you know came I mean? home, all your beefing that you was doing with other rappers, everything got Yeah, I reached out to a bunch of people, man. Like, yo, listen, man, I'm sorry. Yo, I was bugging, dog. You know what I'm saying? I was young-minded, stupid. I apologize. And people you. were receptive. Yeah, and everybody I reached out to was like, yo, that's real, P. Like, and then yo. you write the book and said, Nori shot somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nori, were, Nori didn't mistake. mind that. He didn't mind that. Nori shot somebody my mistake. Nori was like, how come I tell people I shot someone no one cares, but when yeah, Prodigy said it. <laughs> Nori, you mean how he shot him my mistake? He shot the ground. Oh. Ricochet. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So but, he's um, one of the people that you called and apologized. Yeah, I mean, you know, Nori, just different people, man. Me and Joe Buttons had a conversation. Um, you know, me, me and Jim Jones had a conversation. Me and Rick Ross had a conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, um... You know, me and uh, me and Sheik Luch had a conversation. Like a, a, a lot of people, I reached out to man. What about Jay Z? Yeah, yeah we've been had a conversation. Like we've been put that behind us a long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. Right, the the winter after summer jam that they, they threw me on the screen with mm-hmm. my Michael Jackson outfit on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a tutu. Nah, it wasn't no <laughs> yeah, it was a, tutu. <laughs> <laughs> a tutu in my pocket. <laughs> so you think that you That's like? Why I went to jail for a tutu. Yeah. You, you think that you beefing with Havoc act and then making that brought y'all closer together? Like sometimes you have a falling out, and then afterward you come back together and it's closer, or is it still a little weird and awkward? Um, nah, it's not. Yo, I'm the type of person like I could see, I could see past certain things, man. Especially now. Like, when I came home, like I said, I was reaching out to people, apologizing to them mm. for the way I used to act. You know what I mean? And so I can I could look past certain things and see the bigger picture. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's really not that important. What is important is feeding our families and making sure that we, we create jobs for people and, you know, and, and making sure that we have something to pass down to our next generations and whatnot. And, make, and making sure that we continue the, um, the good hip-hop, history that we've been making like you know what i mean with our music musically you know so you think saying? it did make you guys tighter like you get to put everything on the table maybe sometimes you have things pent up i think it make, i think it make it more real like just be real like that's how you feel say something about it you know what i'm saying address it you still talk to 50 yeah yeah that's that's my dog right there 50's a good dude man word for real I love Five, man. I go up to the office. I say what's up to him every now and then. I drop some promotional stuff off. You know what I mean? See what he's doing. We chat for like a little 30 minutes, hour, every now and then. Mm-hmm. Right. What about Nas? Nas, I ain't speak to Nas in a minute, man, since we did the songs when I first came home. But, um, yeah, I love Nas the same, man. Right. So the, the Karma Loop capsule collection that you're doing, is that available now? or that's? Yeah, calm, the Karma Loop stuff is available right now. You can go to Karma Loop or Plunder. You know what I mean, and you'll see it up there. And um, we doing clothing and accessories, and uh, the accessories we selling. We got, we got a, a jewelry line that's um, that'll be up for back to school in September. Mm-hmm. And we doing like um, ch- little chains for girls and say like pretty thug on it and HBIC and stuff like that. Little braces and stuff like that. Oh, uh, nice. Affordable stuff though, you know, nothing crazy. You seen any UFOs lately? Nah, man, I wish. <laughs> it's getting crazier love, though. Why would you UFOs. wish to see? You wish to see that? I love UFOs, man. I believe in them too. You know the uh, <laughs> the Canadian uh, oh, Minister boy, of Defense at a press conference. Yeah, I saw that. You saw that and man. told everybody. So you think they these exist? aliens Trust are friendly? Me, I'm on it. I saw that. You think they're friendly, or you think they want to hurt us? I don't know. What, I don't, to tell you the truth, I don't know what's going on though. To me, it, I'm gonna give you my raw opinion right now about that. I think it's. Mo- I think 99 percent of stuff that we see is the U.S. government. You know what I mean? Testing new technologies and stuff. Ninety nine percent. Ninety nine percent. Like what? Like uh, UFOs and whatever. Like mm-hmm. if, if people were having a sight in or seeing something, I think ninety nine percent of it is like the government. Just like when they first built the stealth bomber. You know what I mean? People was looking at it like, what the hell is that? It yeah. looked like a, a spacecraft or something. But you know that was just new technology. You, you saw the, you mean? saw the dude in the CIA who said that the government actually has aliens working for them. Yeah, I've seen all of that. Too, man. <laughs> you believe that? that? I don't know, man. I, say, I, I believe in that. Okay, okay, so until I see an uh, alien, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying, yeah. you think about all this. All you this, might be seeing one right now. Yeah, you uh, might be sitting there. Yeah. See that? See this big ass? <laughs> think about this whole universe, all the planets. You think God got all this real estate empty? Nah, nah man. man. Nah. We, it's now, I mean, prodigy. you got to think about it too. Like an alien 
it's just a, a different life form. That's it could it. be a plant. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Or it could be like an organism. Like it don't have to be an actual monster little man or whatever. Right, right. Little, little, girl, little alien woman. Prodigy and Charlemagne, this question's for both of you. Oh boy. If you see a UFO, do you go to it or do you run from it? I've seen one before. I just stood there and watched it. I was scared when, when I you seen see, When you seen one, Charlemagne? Most Corner South Carolina, I was in third grade. Did I was about high? eight. Nah, I was just playing. I was playing in my grandmother's yard. Damn. And I seen it just hovering over the trees in broad daylight. I mean, at the time, I didn't realize what it was. So like I got older, I was like, yo, I seen a flying saucer before. My mm-hmm. grand, and my grandmother told me, and my father told me they was together and they seen one in Virginia and they was down south. I was in It was just hovering and then it just shot off. And I didn't even think nothing of it. I ain't. Okay, so now, if you see one, what do you do? To pull out my phone and get it on Vine. <laughs> put it on Instagram. Absolutely. That's a great idea. We need more of that. <laughs> Prodigy, we appreciate you stopping through today. The album's in stores right now. HNIC, the infamous novella is also available. Not yet. That's July yeah, that's 16th, right? July oh, it's not 16th. July 16th. Oh, so that's we got a little preview. Copy, you know what I'm saying? I'll be reading this today. Uh, All, right. All, right. All right, well, it's The Breakfast Club. It's Power 1051. Prodigy. Hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning. Tune in. We'll